I imagine shortly we will be live on the channel, and now we are. So, hello everyone, and welcome to Adventure on so many levels. We're going to play some Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I'm Christiana Ellis. I am the Dungeon Master. Our players tonight, Jenny Meltzer as Zaylene. Hello. Uh, Starla Hutchton as Carolina Swift. Hello, friends. Paul Fisher as Zinhorn Windborn. Good evening. Chuch Schubert as Sequential. Hello, hello. And Mark Kilfoyle as Nedry Shiny Rock. I'm starting to question our plans as well as everything else. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, it just so happens that right now I've got sort of a, an orangey glow on my own camera video because I'm looking at the map where you left off. So let's talk about what happened last time, way back before the holidays. In, in the distant past of 2021. Everything was terrible. <laughs> Our fancy hat got stolen. Yeah. It's literally on fire now. Mm. <laughs> this is fine. This mm -hmm. is fine. Mm -hmm. Everything is fine. Everything's fine. So indeed, it appears that uh, your persistent adversary um, uh, managed to infiltrate this observatory, uh, possess sequential briefly uh, long enough to steal the deep jade circlet um and although you chased him down briefly he is a slippery fella and uh managed to escape you um although not without uh warning you once again that he believes that you are not up to the challenge of pursuing the knowledge that you are pursuing and just generally expressing his disdain for your efforts in general um but then you decided, uh, once it seemed clear that you could not pursue him further uh, without leaving, you, you delved deeper into the workings of this observatory slash super weapon dungeon and finally entered the chamber where the planar rift is currently open to the elemental plane of fire, at which point you encountered a large uh, flaming spirit of some kind who boasted about his possession, his claiming of this rift as his territory. Um, and then you made fun of him. So now we're going to fight. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wanted to head this off uh, in the past. Well, yeah, we were... We were we going to try to <laughs> and he oh, no. rolled relatively low, so maybe you have a, an opportunity still. But uh, <laughs> we are beginning. Um, I'll go ahead and bring us over to the map here. Uh, we are beginning with an initiative roll because uh, with the the uh, the conversation, the way it went previously, um, didn't please him, and you see his. His fists beginning to glow and wreathe with fire. His expression turns uh, angry, and it seems clear he's preparing to uh, to fight. And so we'll see how uh, how that goes with your initiative rolls here. And Claire, I had to ruin it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that guy had to open his big mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have uh, the whole thing prepared. Come on. Looks like we got like a couple a... of nines. So who who is uh, higher decks between uh, Lynn and Zinhorn? I have a sixteen. I think you beat me. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I have a ten. All right. So, uh, all right. So that means. As we begin, Nedry, you are up first as you uh, manage to intuit and uh, that violence is about to break out and you are able to <laughs> act first. Um, just a, a, a quick clarification on the map because it's sure. not quite clear. Mm -hmm. It looks as though there's an outer ring of an elevated area that's all the way around and then kind of ends with stairs going down to the lower levels. Is that that correct? is correct. So let me just walk uh, everyone around. 
the features of the map here just because it's it's a big map and so yes if you were to follow your way around here you can go all the way around um, to the point where you get back around to here at which point there are just stairs that will bring you down to the lower level um, up until like most of the way around it is a 30 foot drop to the uh, to the next level down um, okay. The other piece of this that I didn't mention this time, but I did last time, is that in this strange little ritual circle area, you see a spectral gnome figure apparently frozen in some sort of a casting position, but seems to be entirely motionless. Okay. I think we hadn't known it was a gnome. I think we just saw the figure. So ah, well, uh, to be uh, clear, then, it is small in stature. And that is uh, this spot here, is that right? Correct. Okay. And then the rest we see is just this fiery kind of open space. Yeah, and um, uh, certainly the place where you see a bunch of fire right there seems like it would be pretty bad to fall in there. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely seems like the case. Uh, on the others, on the outside, is that sheer wall up to the top of the cave? Uh, yes, uh, you can essentially, okay. yeah, just... Uh, um, anything that is not kind of shown as like floor area consider to be like off limits, essentially. Like you could run up the wall. There is a ceiling in here, but also maybe being directly on the ceiling above all that fire also might be unpleasant. But it's just generally yeah. really hot in this room. I should be clear. Yep. Uh, just I'm just trying to make sure I understand the, the setting. Absolutely. Uh, and the ceiling is approximately... Like, is it way up there or just like, just yeah, a little let's, bit ahead of let's say it's like maybe 40, 50 feet above your current elevation. Okay. And, and I'm seeing magic symbols. Are those kind of scrawled onto the area or are they uh, kind of generally those floating? Are, those seem to be being cast out from the fire somehow. Okay. Oh, neat. Okay. All right. Now that I've got a lay of the land. I have to finally make a decision. Um, I think, okay, so he didn't say anything after Zinhorn spoke to him. No, but he looks like okay. he's warming up. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, I think Nedri will... Kind of stride through and kind of move a little bit off to the side. Excuse me. Excuse me. I have a lot of questions. You seem like the only person around here who can answer any of them. Um, and make a persuasion roll. Okay. It's not going to go well. Oh, that, oh that's, that's a lot pretty better good. Than I expected. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, we will have to wait for his turn to see how that, how the, uh, the reaction goes, but you have rolled high. And is, is that an action? Yeah. I'm fine if it is. You're, you're, okay. you're talking instead of doing something else. Yeah. I would say like, if you were preparing to cast a spell, then I would have made you roll your persuasion with disadvantage because, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, Zeline, your turn. I'm going to start walking forward, like next to Nedri, <clears throat> just like look back over my shoulder with with disdain at Zinhorn and be like, you should be ashamed of yourself. We barely even know this magnificent creature. All right. So I guess you could go ahead and make a persuasion roll uh, too. <laughs> Seems like also what you're trying. Okay, 16. 16. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, okay. Uh, Carolina. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, yes. Briefly shooting a glance at, at Zinhorn. And, uh, yeah, going to uh, hurry up to the... Um, move my guy here. Like, right here. And, uh, yeah. Going to start talking a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
I must humbly apologize for any perceived slights caused by my, you know, this person. I believe there's been a tiny misunderstanding. You see, I'm a bard, and my job is to tell stories, specifically stories of awe-inspiring occurrences. You've heard of the Bashan Perennial Prophet, yes? Of course you have. Everyone has. And since you must have enough knowledge to dwarf the Library of Villanocta, I'm certain you have at least heard of it in passing. So, since we're in initiative, I figure that's all I can... Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm not going to have you roll just because uh, at this point there, I think that like the group has uh, passed kind of a threshold with the caveat that it's now Zinhorn's turn. <laughs> well, I see where the rest of the party is going, and even though I originally thought that this was going to end up uh, with, in a fight, I am going to hold my action. Uh, and uh, what is that action going to be? Uh, I guess uh, I'm just going to hold um, uh, Toll the Dead. Oh, he hasn't taken any damage. Mm -mm. Also, looking like you're about He's to cast a spell could be perceived as hostile, so... I'll leave it to you to decide knowing that information. Well, in that case, uh, since I will likely be the ire of its anger, I'm going to move over here. So if it tries to like flame strike, I'll be the only one who takes it. And that'll be my action. Okay. Do you say anything? I, I'm going to kind of look at him and go, you're not Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's not here, man. Dave's not here, man. <laughs> it's like I completely thought it was somebody. I'm trying to play it off like I was talking to somebody else. Make a deception check. <laughs> oh, they still at, at disadvantage, now. I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So the first one, oh, God. First one is a four. And the second one's a 15. Now, fortunately, you have uh, some colleagues who did better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think. All of the fine words spoken by the others have um, soothed the ire to some extent. And he it looks to be uh, looking a little more pleased with all of that. But he, he sort of sneers over at you, Zinhorn, and then turns to the others and says, You would do well to teach that one some manners. Oh, yes, well, you know, good help is so hard to find. It's been a long couple of days. Well, then, I hope that the appearance of this portal and this foothold within the material plane claimed by an ifrit of the fire plane is something worth seeing. Oh, it's incredible. Definitely. Ooh. Well, that, that definitely is so exciting. So, well, we heard this little whisper of a tale that somewhere high up in the barrier mountains was a truly wondrous construction, a portal to another plane the size of which no one has seen since, well, maybe ever. As you can imagine, this whisper was a little light on the details, and no one seemed to know what the current status of it was. And it was to, known to have been created by some truly magnificent wielders of magical power that are heretofore unrivaled in their prowess. They have However, come and gone. I am well, here now. Well, that's kind of where I was going. Now, there were some people that said, no, nobody could ever take over that magnificent creation. But I knew, I just knew that with all the incredulous being 
scattered across the plains, it was definitely possible someone or something was even more powerful. Powerful enough to overtake an arcanist who could not only tear a hole in that which divides the realms, but keep it open and stable for an eternity, if need be. And wouldn't you know it, it looks like I was right, right? Oh, Nedri, honestly, you have one job. Shouldn't you be writing this down? Ugh. Like I said, good help is so hard to find. You know? Well, it's not my only <laughs> job, know. but I do want to write this down. And now where was I? Uh, oh, yes. Um, <laughs> kind of been thrown off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as, as he looks to you, Nedry, writing things down, you say, if you are to tell my tale, then tell all the those who might doubt that you beheld Sindrex and his domain. Oh, absolutely. Could you spell that for us? We want to make sure we get it down in print exactly how it should be. It's, it's with, with, with a C. Oh. C in, and, and an X. Not, not C-K, but yes. C-I-N, like, like Cinder. Well, that makes sense. Nice. It's more spelled like the gnomish or elvish way rather than the dwarven way. Well, it is more properly spoken with the appropriate resonance in a place of power. Syndrex. And then the, like the walls and ceiling kind of shake a little bit. <laughs> Clap like this. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's so wonderful. Oh my goodness. You're going to be so famous. Oh, they're going to be talking about this all the way from pandemonium to the Feywild. Oh, this is going to be magnificent. Um, I do have a few questions though. Um, the uh, rock, the, the the one that's, you know, dripping with, you know, the very essence of nightmares itself. Was that your doing or is it new? Like, did it arrive when we did? Because um, if so, well, I can't imagine you'd tolerate a pesky creature like that. And one of the air at that, trying to encroach on your rightfully earned territory. So I thought it was either new, you know like we're new or you know it was under your command i mean it might be keeping those like stupid airships with full of soldiers at bay for you know, now but it's probably only a matter of time before one of them wins that fight hmm. Is these that things like, do not document? concern me so so you don't mind so you you don't have a feeling either way on whether or not that should be part of the story uh you can make an inside check if you if you like Should actually roll for him. Ten. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I, he seems uh, unbothered by any thoughts of uh, the rock or the, the airships. Either he seems to think he has that well under control or that they're no threat to him. Hmm. Interesting. So, can can we have a few more details? Like, how long have you been here? Um, oh, what was it like? How did you overcome the forces that controlled this place before you arrived? This rift was opened by mortal fools who knew not the powers that they trifled with. But when they left this ugly tear between the plains, I saw an opportunity. It had been left so that only energy might pass through, but I, through my sheer power and strength, forced it into the condition you see today. Interesting. You've got all that, Nedry? Oh, yeah. Ma make sure you, you get all the details down about, you know, his... his his force and his power. He's just nodding like, yes. <clears throat> Essentially. I've also got a lot more questions if there's more time. Like, who's that? Let me point over to the suspended caster. Ah, uh, another of the line of mortals who thought to 
manipulate the cosmic forces to their own end. How, I like how him long, how he is. I see him as how, sort of a trophy. How long has he been there? Since my original incursion. It was his ritual that gave me the opportunity. I'm going to lean into sequential and just be like, does he look familiar? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to do. Um, go see ahead. if I can tell anyway uh, who yeah. it is. Make a perception check because this is, you know, it's it's a ways away. And also he's spectral and right next to an opening into the elemental plane of fire. Um, cool. And um, I may as well try and use my flash of genius. Sure. To like uh, dial in my eyes to like a different, uh, like block out red or something to make it easier. <laughs> uh, and uh, per uh, perception and then plus four. Oh. Huh. I, I oh, think 18. 14. 14. So it would be 18. Yeah. Oh, okay. 18. Even better. Yeah. You can definitely tell it, it looks like Greg Holm. <gasps> wow. So would so you yeah, try to mind mask would, would you mind terribly like we really want to be very accurate so that we can make sure that all the details of this story you know are, are spread far and wide like farther than Pashan, villanocta i'm hoping we can get distribution um over into the the elemental plane of earth um i don't it the elemental plane of water is a bit tough the the paper doesn't hold up well <laughs> um those liquid spirits have no appreciation for the power of fire. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I've never been myself. Um, but um, do, you, do you think we could get maybe a little closer look at some of these areas? We won't touch anything, I promise. Um, we just want to you know, write it all down, document it for posterity so everyone can know just how magnificent you are, because this is truly incredible. Such Very an honor. well, but know that my forces and the energy created from this rift may damage your mortal bodies. Mm. Proceed at your mm. own risk. Oh, we will be very careful. So, um, I guess I'm going to try to, I'm going to start walking down this yeah, sure. slope. I can get my yeah so uh because we're not in a combat situation you can go ahead and just move down there and we can assume that you did go all the way around we don't have to you don't have to make your token go little bits at a time all the way down around there uh, and he has kind of moved back a little bit to where he's floating over the rift and he is in very much he's take he's still floating but he's kind of in like a cross-legged floating position and he is just sort of uh, yes, yes, uh, observe my glory, that sort of thing. I'm going to observe his glory. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to get as close to that little, like, portal thing as possible and just sort of, like, stare at him and pretend reverence. Sure. And um, also, I want to examine the portal while I do that. Okay, okay. What are you trying to determine about it? Um, we know it goes to the plane of fire, right? Well, that's what you've been told, and just based on what you see, it seems logical, given all okay. the fire. Okay. Um, I, I'm just kind of examining it to see, like, if it would be possible to dive in there in an emergency. Um, I can tell you, without making a roll, that yes, you could do that. But what you can currently see through it is literally flames. So okay. you have no idea what might be below those flames. Or So could you jump through it? Yes, into the elemental plane of fire. And you would be literally jumping into, for all you know, might be an infinite fire. Okay. But it would function as a portal. So, you know, at your own risk. <laughs> Okay. Yep. I just wanted to know. Sure. No, no, no. It's completely valid. In fact, actually, it just does bring to mind the other piece that we I didn't mention from last time, which was that just promptly as you were having this conversation with uh, with uh, Syndrex, uh, 
Carolina also got a message from Yobert saying that the emperor's men had been ordered to capture you and mm -hmm. that they were moving in on your location. So that's why I was analyzing the sure, portal sure, yeah. just in case we have to go so, through that. Yes. In a pinch, we have a friend now. <laughs> in a pinch you can go through, but it does it it looks spectacularly dangerous at the moment. Anyway. Okay. And, um, so I had some follow up questions um for you, um Mr. Sendrex, how do you want to be addressed exactly? Do you have an honorific that you would like us to use? There are um, honorifics used within the elemental plane of fire, but I do not know if they would carry the same gravitas in your plane. What would be... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, what would be the appropriate honorific in <clears throat> the elemental plane. What would be the utmost of titles? Magnificent. Powerful. Flatulent. Flatulent. I am not familiar with this one. <laughs> what does it's it like mean? elevated above all. Yes. Yes, I like that. Syndrex um. the flatulent. <laughs> oh man <clears throat> well um first off uh could you tell us a little bit about yourself um where you come from um as i mean I've, none of us i don't think have ever been to the plane of fire so maybe a few background notes like um what's it like there is it all on fire all the time no uh there is of course a large amount of fire is as it is the plane from which fire energy derives its source. But there are, in fact, areas within the plane that are not only suitable for, but the current residence of mortal creatures such as yourselves. One such location is known as the City of Brass. Interesting. I don't believe I have any stories about that. Uh, you probably would think... if you knew anything about the elemental plane of fire, but uh, I'm yeah, just... I don't. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I've never... Yeah, I, I haven't come across that in any of my research yet. Um, have, have you been there before? Well, of course I have. But... Is it a What's... very large city? I, it... It is large, yes, it is a spectacular city. But my last visit there was not as I am now, the conqueror of the material plane. Mm. Oh. oh, imagine what they would say about you now. Oh gosh, they would be so jealous. No doubt. It is a feat uh, which has never previously been accomplished in all of known history. Has this portal that, your portal, has it always gone to the elemental plane of fire? Well, from my perspective, it goes to the prime material plane. Hmm. So, here's a question. How would you feel about, I, I don't know if we're allowed, but would this portal take us to this city of brass because i would would just be so delighted to be able to go and share this story with everyone there so that they too might know how magnificent you are i believe that could be arranged for a price hmm. oh. what kind of price what would you need what have you to offer Hmm. Hmm. What kind of thing would you want? I'm afraid we don't have a terrible lot of money. Do you speak of gold and silver and platinum, these things? Yeah. Yes, those things. We don't have a lot of that. Those things do please, but to be certain, a gift appropriate to my glory is more desirable. 
Well, we had something, but unfortunately it was stolen, so there goes that idea. Yeah. I mean, a crown? Can you imagine what that would have looked like on him? Oh. Mm -hmm. Breathtaking. Do you was... speak to me of gifts that you are not able to provide? Well, we would have, but it just got stolen. Mm -hmm. I mean, we tried to track it down and recapture it, but the person who stole it disappeared and we actually came in here because we thought maybe he was in here. Do you seek to please me now by with stories of your own failures? So, I wonder, have, have you heard the tale of the Heroes of Legend? Are you familiar with that one? This is a story, of course, known to all who existed at that time. Well, I didn't want to presume age. But, um, do you remember the dragon Neocortex, who really liked to make deals? Of course. Well, how would you feel about owning a piece of that? Mm. And I will show him the uh, scale of Neocortex that I have. Mm. Yeah, so he will, he will fly down much closer to you um, to, to inspect. Um, do you, do you like offer, like hand it over or you're, you're um, just kind of like, yeah, I, I will hold it so he can see it. Okay. But so he can see that it's real. Um, oh, and there's a certificate of authenticity somewhere <laughs> here, patting down my pockets and the, on the scroll somewhere. Okay. Um, uh, how it's, it's paper. So I, it might be a little flammable. Hmm. I would uh, know. Kind of like hold it under the arm and then unroll the scroll so he can read it. <laughs> yeah, he he does. He, you know, he pull, pulls out some strange little fire framed reading glasses. <laughs> Very <laughs> handsome. Your flatulousness. Puff, puff, puff of smoke. Um, yes, this is a worthy offering indeed. In exchange for this item, I would permit you transit to the city of Brass through my portal. Oh, that would be most generous of you. I mean, truly, this is this is a a gift worthy of your flatulence. Uh, I think Evan leans over to use in horn and says, "Are we just going to leave the telescope super weapon to be claimed by the emperor?" Um. I, has has uh, has um. Lynn actually told us that the. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not. Wow. I'm not sure. Nope. Uh, I don't. Think Did not so. say a word. There was not yeah. time. So I think I think uh, Lynn is just suddenly spending a lot of time on talking about teleporting you all to the trying not to die. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but nobody else knows why you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Hard I, works I, in mysterious ways. <laughs> she seems to have a plan. I'm not sure where she's going with it, but. Uh, she just uh, <laughs> kept our gooses from being cooked, so I'm kind of rolling with it. And so, we'll look, look at everyone. It's like, well, play along. Do you all like to go on an adventure? Uh, I'm just going to drift it away I'll from go. right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to drift <laughs> it away from paying attention right to the conversation to stare at the mystical symbols mm -hmm. that are flying through the air and the trapped gnomes. Sure, uh, sure. Magical prison. So, um, you can go ahead and make an arcana check there. If uh, sequential is also doing that, yeah, you can roll with advantage. I'll assist you. That looks like. Why did they come up with so history? Yeah, That's I don't know it? that that same, roll. It's the same up... number. Uh, but, uh, it looks like it did. Uh, it. Yeah, weird. Well, well, basically the same role anyway. Okay. So, well, yeah. So uh, that's a that's a tw twenty one, I, I I guess, or or there is a plus uh, one four on the history one for some reason. Oh yeah, with uh, the advantage. Yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah. Um, so uh, the plus um, one d four is because of his his background when he's rolling history. I just grabbed the I wrong see. one. I okay. Um, so in any case, a twenty six is pretty good. Um, I think while this conversation is happening uh, with Carolina and Syndrax, uh, the two of you are 
examining this, uh, this ritual circle and the spectral uh, image within. And based on some of the sketches in the notebooks from, uh, from Greg Holm and some of the other schematics, you can definitely recognize that he is performing a ritual similar to the one that originally draw, drew spiritual energy from the plane of dream through Greg Holm and channeling into Sequential's physical body, thus awakening him in the first place. This seems to be of a similar school, but with the energy flow redirected. And uh, however, it's clear mm -hmm. that it is uh, drawing power from the plane and that the planes changed, the, the, the rift changed in a way that interrupted the spell and has left it in a kind of stasis. And uh, you think that uh, the, it, you could, it could go either way. If you, what it would take is if you shut down the rift entirely, the spell would just fail and it would be like nothing happened. Like, right, like it was mm -hmm. counterspelled almost. Or if you tuned the rift to match what like the telescope and the, and the weapon needed, the ritual would complete. You don't know what that effect would be. It's an incredible amount of magic, don't you think? Oh, let's have studied this for a long time, but... That is Greg Holm. What? That is Greg Holm. I don't know how to signal everybody else without him knowing it's important to us. He seems pretty distracted by Carolina at the moment. You hear in your mind. <laughs> I can tell them if that's important. It's important to me, <laughs> but... <laughs> So starting with uh, with <laughs> Carolina and then one at a time, uh, in their minds, they'll hear Nedry's voice. Sequential says that the one that's trapped is Greg Holm. Mid-ritual. We can shut down the ritual or we could complete it, but not until the portal is lot less disrupted. So it will inform each of them basically saying the same thing over and over again in their heads. And is the um, is the tuning something I know I we, we, I can do with the other controls, or is um, it so, yes. something that that has because of the blockage I can't? Right, that was the issue. Is that you right. found the controls and know how right. to use them to control the rift, with the caveat that right now those controls are not functioning because yeah. of the obstruction, the source of which seems clear at the moment. Yep. <laughs> cool. And the, the magical effect that's surrounding Greg Holm, Nedry will take some more time and specifically study that. Okay. I mean, uh, it, this is not a new role. It's just, you know, you're deepening your understanding of this type of ritual. But um, it seems clear at, from his you know writings and uh, sequentials descriptions of his memory that... Uh, even as he was casting it, Greg Holm was not sure what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. but I think he's, he's, you know, paying the, the original price. Yeah. So he understood that that's like the poetic way to explain what the spell does. But there's a difference between that and knowing precisely what it means. Yep. So, so the realization is that the imprisonment that Greg Holm was experiencing is not due to Syndrax. Uh, well, it, it, not intentionally. Not directly. Intentional, yeah. right. So his forcing his way through the portal and holding it open interrupted the spell. Gotcha. Yeah, so indirectly, but, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, not, not with intention, but nonetheless, the result is the same, that uh, it is in stasis because of Syndrex. Um, would you allow me just one moment to converse with my compatriots um i just want to be sure that they want to go as much as i do he uh he's looking at do you still have the scale out i do 
He says, perhaps a bargain can be struck and then the transit can be made at your convenience. At our convenience? Like you could... What I mean <laughs> is that you could give me the scale now and then travel when you are ready. Really? Like from anywhere or do we have to stay here and go? No, from here. I just meant that if you oh, wanted oh. to have a conversation, you should give me the scale first. <laughs> ah, well, I have your word. You have my word that when you are ready, you may use this portal to travel to the elemental plane of fire and th through there to the city of brass. I guess I will look at Zaleen for confirmation because she's right there. It's like, are we doing this? <laughs> what do you think? Yes? Okay. I don't know why, but I feel like we need to. All right. My guinea pig. I... Is so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about this, guys. Evan? <laughs> uh... We agreed to your terms. And I will... Uh, I guess I'll probably just go like down over here and just like set the scale on the ground. I'll, okay. Should I? Put, I'll put the certificate next to it just because. <laughs> oh sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, he holds down his arm and uh, summons. Uh, no, never mind. He just he, the fire somehow sort of obeys his command, lifts the scale up. The uh, certificate is immediately incinerated, uh, but he doesn't seem to mind. <laughs> Um, and the scale floats up and sort of just becomes kind of like a central piece of his uh, chest armor that he's wearing. I have a feeling that's going to come back to bite me in the butt, but okay. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> All right. Um, so I will. Uh, um, you can make an arcana again. check if you if you like, um, just to understand mm. like what it what does it mean for this creature to have yeah. that item yeah six. you with the six I oh <laughs> i can convince him of anything but i don't know shit so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so he's okay he's, he's so, got it now yeah okay so uh going to back up here to confer mm -hmm. like kind of wave them over huddle huddle I think in this uh, constantly during this time, Nidri's chattering away in Sequential's head. It's like, but what if we tried this? There's a certain way we could turn the ritual, perhaps. Or uh, I might be able to slow things down a little bit so they won't be able to. What's going on over there? <laughs> Come here. <laughs> okay. Do you Let's think go. he has them? Hmm. When, when everybody is in the huddle, you're like, we got to get out of here. The. Orders have changed from uh, watch to capture. They're coming for us. This oh. is our way out. The Emperor's friends. Well, I wonder what changed Ooh. that. Our awesome. I don't know, but it was enough that Yobear risked breaking uh, silence to let me know. So. Hmm. This is it. This is our way out. And sequential, I, I know what that means, but I don't think he's going anywhere. And if it if it helps, um, well, I mean, the Ifrit will keep anything from, you know, happening here, probably. I mean, he is very great uh, and powerful. Well, he had nothing to do with this, though. I think he just sort of stumbled across this place. Yeah, he could be a total poser. That's what I said. <laughs> oh, he's Very, still hey, incredibly hey, powerful. Do not MP disparage. That. Do not disparage our uh, He <laughs> does not seem like he's listening carefully to you. He is very pleased mm -hmm. with this new dragon scale. Yeah. Okay. It would have been <laughs> a bad idea, but whatever. That. It's done. So there's one way out of here, guys. If you don't well, want to go, always understand. One way. It's if, it's your choice. If the emperor, if if he is not 
that big of an adversary and the emperor does take control of this facility i mean that's devastating and i mean that is greg Holm. what if they do something to him if he can complete that ritual it's it's going to have a, a huge effect on on that that monster there right well, we, I, does, I does it look like that the 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 creature is holding him the afrit's holding him I mean, so I yeah, can, so he's to, frozen in time. To be clear, because uh, because between you and and Nedry, you you definitely <clears throat> kind of understood this, is that in order to either interrupt like and dispel the ritual or to allow it to complete, either way, you would need to clear the obstruction okay. from the portal and uh, then um, make the appropriate change to the controls. The so imprisonment is really a, I think it's a side effect, essentially, of the ritual going wrong. The size and dimensions of the rift between planes is not correct. And that would have been part of the calculations in making the ritual. So by shifting the dimensions back, the ritual could complete and he'd be free. Or it could be stopped and he'd be free, I think. So you think if we could get the free to go back through. But then we wouldn't have a way back. So someone would have to be here on the other side to adjust all of the stuff. Well, the portal would be, if not closed, it would be stable. It'd be small and only energy technically is supposed to pass through it. So it might be difficult to transition. We have to make a decision. Yeah, we, have, forever. we have to do it fast because if they're coming, well, there's still the rock to deal with, so there'll be a little while we, at least. Maybe. <clears throat> now, if I if I can if I can free Greg home on the in, on this side, I know he can make it right. I have so many questions for him. Plus, I don't want to see him just sort of hanging there. It's a little indignant. So I have an idea, and I don't know if he'll go for it, but I can try. M maybe he'll. Um, offer to escort us or show us the way just beyond the portal. I don't know how long I can keep him, though, and he'll probably be really mad. Origin I story. If, I don't know if my boots are strong enough for the plane of fire. We just have to trust this is going to be okay. Like, we're literally going somewhere where everything is on fire. <clears throat> I'm sure he has a way to protect everybody, but... Yeah, Okay. So yeah, you that's want, what do, we need. Are you sure about this sequential? You're you're gonna. Yeah, I think it. it's the best bet. I think that will clear the obstruction, and we can set the resonance right. And if they are coming here, I mean, I he'll he'll, Greg Holmes should know better. But we can power it down and stop them from taking control. Okay. Well, okay. So why don't you go ahead and leave? Make for the controls. I don't know how long you'll have. That's if he goes for it. But just go go like you're going to go. Like uh, right? I think Evan says, well, wait a, wait a minute. You're, you're going to go through the portal with him and then change the portal? Wait. I, I'm confused what your plan is. Yeah, we're not going to be able to come back if the portal has changed. Probably not that way, no. Well, also want to make him really mad? He seems pretty ha happy with it the way it is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's not going to be pleased. Like, he'll probably try to kill us mm -hmm. once he realizes that he cannot come back to his magnificent stronghold. That's, well, that's a con sequential and Greg home would be safe and he can fix it. Right? No, that's the, yeah, that's too great of a cost for all of you to go. Well, I, I could know. just go Maybe with we'll him. Get there and, uh, hmm. He might not even go like, I mean, yeah. I, mean, there, I don't think he's going to go. 
Yeah, and it should exactly be the other way around. Of, uh, the, I, maybe I was lonely. I should go with him. And then I can take the, you know, <clears throat> his wrath. Don't have any dimension spells. Yeah. So I think, you really, no, I think sequential, yet. you do, you know how to operate the equipment. So that's what I was just going to say. Everyone <laughs> else went through the portal and you stayed behind. If the rest of you could talk Syndrex into leaving the portal, at least temporarily to help with that, which you don't know necessarily is his plan, but if you could arrange mm -hmm. that, Sequential, you do know how to operate the controls to change the rift um, as, as desired. Right. I think we'll be okay. Yeah. I, I trust that my part's friends. going to be required to let yeah. up the ritual finish. <laughs> I trust my friends and hmm. I trust you. I think you can do this. And I think it's important. This needs to happen. Do we think? Should somebody stay behind with Sequential? I mean, leaving him, leaving them here by themselves. I just like maybe Evan, yourself, maybe Evan. Maybe oh, Evan. I'm used stay. to being by myself. I mean, and I'll I'll have Greg home. So I know, but in the meantime, well, you might need backup. Like as you're trying to get there, what if what if the friends get into, you know, get into the lab first? I mean. Maybe Evan should stay behind to watch your back. I mean, I will. It's entirely up to him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would I, appreciate it. Yeah. It I would mean, be the safest place for Evan. Yeah. I, I'm it just. It would be safer for sequential for sure. Definitely. I'll, I'll do what I can, but I mean, what are, are we. Are we fighting to the death to to, to to stop them i what what i i i'm not necessarily even saying no i just want to understand what the <clears throat> what is the desirable if, outcome here if someone else gets control of this place it's entirely possible they could destroy half of everything here like the like plane the world yeah okay i mean they yeah. could also discover a lot of wondrous things but i guess we're dealing with the dark side <coughs> No, I mean, I, I'm on board. That sounds really bad. I'm just, I guess, I'm just worried about my ability to stop that from happening. Hmm. I will put a hand on his shoulder and say, I believe in you. You've come this far. <laughs> okay. That laugh well, is not everything you've accomplished. I will also be, I will be like, Evan, we've been through a lot together. And I saved your life. And I've, I've departed so much wisdom from the mistress to you. She will watch over you and guide you. And you know how to fight the nightmares. So Have you made a <laughs> pact with our Lord and Savior? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I mean, I, I, I signed up for this thing because, you know, we want, I wanted to help save the world and to... Uh, you know, fight the corrupt tyranny of the empire. So, well, this exactly. will definitely be doing that. Both. Right. And we will Both find of these paths you guys are equally again. important. And we'll be so, back. We'll find you again. We will return for you. But don't wait for us. I mean, yeah. Like, life. if you guys have to leave or It'll something, it's okay. I mean, yeah. who knows how we're going to get back from the plane of fire? You'll just have to trust your friends, too. Okay. And punch his shoulder. <laughs> Evan just kind of, you know, looks over and uh, to sequential and just says, "Then I'll stay here with you and I'll I'll have your back." And he goes to put like a hand on your shoulder, but it, it he goes, ah, "Oh, it's really hot right now." <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is hot. It is hot in here. All right. So I would wait Can just a little bit for them to get walking. further up okay. and like headed out. All right. Kind of sad to see them go. This is just <clears> totally <throat> chill, totally normal. I would like to notes. <laughs> yeah. No, so I yeah, I'm not gonna make you like sneak your way up around. Although I think I think as as Evan and, and Sequential do start to make their way up, Syndrex says, So then 
Your colleagues will stay behind while you travel? Yes, they weren't up for this part of the adventure. Um, but we certainly are. I do... Um, I, I'm slightly concerned that we don't have any maps or I don't, I don't even think any we contacts. We don't have any Boots. contacts there. Boots right? would be nice. Would would it be possible if just for a few <laughs> minutes, um, you could maybe like point us in the right direction towards the city of Brass, just just for a few minutes. You don't have to take us the whole way. Just till uh, we get our bearings. Go ahead I'll and make you your the whole way. That'll be great. check with advantage because, you know, you've, <clears throat> you've, you've earned a fair amount of goodwill here. Okay. <laughs> I have a plus 12 to persuasion. That would have been sweet. 22. Okay. Uh, do you oh, want to that roll? was with yeah. advantage. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> same thing. Okay. Exactly. Nope, same that's thing. a perception check. Because uh, oh, I was only. Oops, plus I rolled eight. the wrong thing. My bad. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if 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 it would, so still the same thing. Still well, but that oh second die, that <laughs> perception check oh. would have been a twenty-six, which I will allow. Um, no. <laughs> so the point being, he says, "Yes, I am sure it is a strange thing for a mortal creature from the." prime material plane to gaze upon the elemental plane of fire for the first time, I understand that you would need a guide. I shall help you. Oh, we are truly honored and blessed. Thank you so very much. You're so amazing, really. <laughs> oh, you know, it's, it's of course, it's, uh, you know, as the uh, master of this region, it is incumbent upon me to ensure that those who come to experience its glory are able to do so uh, you know without just getting lost and confused uh, we, we look for a five star ratings <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe <laughs> they're so feeble um, so but uh, as he, he gestures down towards the, the portal and what you see is the flames retreating just a little bit here and there to exposing like a spiral stone staircase descending down into the pit. Um, still open in the middle with the flames, but uh, he he gestures. And uh, do you, you proceed down those stairs? Heck yes. yes. And uh, yep. trying not to like really squee with excitement because <laughs> this is awesome. Nedry, <clears throat> uh, Nedry takes his book. Wraps his book in a, in, a, in a pouch that he has, puts the book inside the other bag of holding that'll <laughs> basically stay there because, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, as you begin to descend down into the elemental plane of fire, accompanied by your uh, your your host, Syndrex the, flat, uh, the Flatulent, um, <laughs> uh you you begin your your journey there in uh so but i think we're gonna we're gonna follow evan and uh sequential for a moment though so you're going back up to the the next level here so i'm gonna yeah um let's see i think we've got uh so i'm just gonna go ahead and move everyone else's tokens kind of uh, out of the way there, but uh, so uh, you know, uh, back on this map. Oh, hang on, I probably need to move you. Yeah, no, there you go. Um, back on this map, that it was the that the big controls just near the you know the the boiling pool that is where you would control the rift. So like this room right, right here. Yeah. All right. Is that, are you headed straight there? Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm going to go straight there. All right. So Evan joins you. So you uh, now see that the, the, the blinking light that said obstruction present no longer mm -hmm. says that. <gasps> um, it worked. So here is the decision that you have to make right now, Sequential, is you can either tune the rift to the frequency which will power the telescope 
and theoretically its other functions. And that will allow Greg Holmes ritual to complete as intended. Or you can shut the rift entirely, which will close it. Uh, it may as well be permanently. It's not to say that another one couldn't be opened, but that you do right. not have the means to do so. Right. Um, and if you do that, then Greg Holmes ritual will be like dispelled and it will be as though right. it just didn't work. Uh, so what are you doing? I have pretty explicit trust in Greg Holmes judgment. It's been shaken because of all of the things we've learned and um, although I, I haven't felt in any way that he's been seemed any way corrupted. Mm -hmm. um, but knowing how dangerous this stuff really is, but I still do trust him. So I think uh, I should complete the ritual. Okay. So as you, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm a, a little bit amused just because we're about to do something that makes a very cool change visually to the map that nobody currently is present on anymore. <laughs> but uh, but I, I'm going to switch back over to that on on the on the uh, on the screen here just so I can show everyone the very cool map transition that I planned. Yeah. Um, here, let me. Uh... <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Special effects. So, uh, but you Whoa. don't see that because you're there, not there and everyone else is uh, <laughs> on the other side of the portal, um, which we'll deal with in a moment. Uh, but so sequential from your current perspective, what you see is that the controls function as intended. And once it is, uh, in the uh, proper alignment, you watch all of the other lights and displays <laughs> receiving power. And you know that uh, to actually operate the telescope or any of its mm -hmm. other functions would require some additional manipulations, but the power sure. is now flowing to those controls. Awesome. Um, you um, don't, like there's no other obvious result. Uh, from where you are now. Okay. Um, do I think I need to go into the um, the one pipe room to change the resonance or the vibration yep. controls? Right. So that is so. Yes. The uh, the controls in like this big round room yeah. here is where you would uh, spin up like like the engine of it, so to speak. Okay. But now that but I don't think that's necessary. Like it's, well, it's balanced. Uh, it, you would, it would probably do there. to check it, but uh, you don't yeah, know cool. that they're like that. It's the sort of thing that you kind of like, you don't know if it needs adjustment until you look at it. But <laughs> so the, uh, tell me though, it like are from your perspective is the goal that you want to power up the telescope and, and use it. I don't want to use it right now. I want this to be stable and safe, but okay. I think it's safe and then run back into the chamber to see that well, what's happening so, to Greg Holm. Okay. So what, what Definitely. I would say right. it is right now is that because all of the other systems didn't have power before they had only like emergency power. Um, you mm -hmm. didn't have the full visibility to understand how everything else in this facility <clears> was configured. So at least the power being drawn through the rift is currently stable. Mm -hmm. But as far as <clears throat> ev all of the other things being controlled, like you don't hear anything exploding or anything. Right. Sure. But you know that there were several other areas which could be manipulated, including the ones that say how much of this midnight stone sludge right, is right. being extracted um, how much is being, you know, sent, you know, the, the alignment of the engine just for, you know, safety and vibration. Mm -hmm. And then of course the actual functioning of the, yeah. the telescope. So 
Right now, yeah. you don't have visibility on all those systems. Um, Evan, I think it's stable. I think we should go back to the portal room and see if Greg Holm was released. He really knows these systems, you know, better than anybody. And if something feels off, we can run back up here and uh, make adjustments. Okay. All right. And start heading back towards the portal. Okay. So, um, Putting you back rift. on that. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, you know, it you could could be either way. <laughs> so um, we'll go ahead and uh, you can delete everyone else's, uh, you know, tokens from here for the moment. Um, yeah, so you can uh, come back in. And uh, the, the, the feel of the room is very different now, of course. Uh, you are mm -hmm. in a, uh, in a, like the heat is very different. Like it's clear now that all of the fire before was just radiating out and heating this whole enormous cavern. But now, although the flames coming up through that rift seem much hotter, there is machinery that is channeling it up almost like a vent. And hmm. so the you once you're in this room, it no longer just feels like you're in a room full of fire. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so you see that there is uh, that same sort of ritual circle down there present. Uh, but you can see that the figure, the spectral figure is still there, but it is no longer in the same position that it was. It is, in fact, moving um, in the sense that it turns to look up at you as you enter and mm. beckons you. You're okay. You, um, you hurry your way around or... <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, we, just we looking up. We don't really need to be on, on the map here as much as just... I don't just have a safe a way, but yeah, mm -hmm. to jump down. <laughs> Yeah, no, so, well, you know. We, I had Featherfall prepared the other day. Yeah. Again, we, <laughs> so we're, we're not in combat here or anything. Yeah. Um, but you. But I would rush, yeah. Yeah. He does, uh, he does hold up his hands to just indicate, and, like, he asks that you not cross the, the circle. Mm -hmm. um, and he says, sequential, you, you've, uh, I, I take it I have you to thank for. Allowing my ritual to complete. Yeah, uh, me and me and some friends of <laughs> I met on the outside. Outside. It's 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 been a long time. Um, you were you were kind of frozen by an afreet from the elemental plane of fire, and I had I had a vague awareness of that, but it was difficult to perceive exactly how time was passing even now feels a bit well i take it that you have recovered the memories then you've cracked the cipher yes yes well done well done my ritual has completed and i understand it now i I had hoped that you would, that it was you that allowed it to complete, and so I've hung on a bit. But I will be traveling in astral form to the plane of dream. An exchange. Wow. This is the, the price such as it is. Wow. Um, is there any way I could go instead? I mean, you don't have to pay this. This You didn't. Sequential. I. You. There are so many levels of understanding 
<laughs> Just like there are so many planes within our known universe and multiverse and sequential, first of all, I want you to understand that you are my greatest creation and any price that I must pay for that, I pay gladly. But it is not such a dire thing. I am on the frontier of discovering a, an entire plane that had been heretofore unknown to all of our arcanists. Mm. And it would seem to me a frontier perhaps even unknown to those residents of Dinuthair because this is the step that they were afraid to take. Mm. So, I ask that you not interfere, but that you try to do what you can to pass on the passion for science and learning and the compassion for others that I was so proud to have found growing within you. <clears throat> Absolutely, but, but there's so many questions now that we know more about this. And well, for one thing, the emperor is almost here and if he takes control of this place, it, it's a, it can be a weapon. That's less than ideal. I think that should be avoided if possible. Yes. Uh, I don't know precisely how it will work, but our connection will remain. And I believe that even when I am there and you remain here, we will have a bond that will be meaningful and we can perhaps work together. But I think if we are to keep this facility and its secrets out of the empire's hands, mm -hmm. I fear that they would follow in the footsteps of the Dinotharians. And so when I release this circle, I will be gone from here, but still in you. And he, he reaches out a hand to like to touch mm. you, but as it kind of crosses the, like the border of the circle, it kind of just sort of phases out. What you must do is close the rift and then destroy all the machinery you can. Yeah. That's what I thought. Can I trap our friends on the other side, but... Ah, well, I hope that uh, as resourceful as they must have been to aid you in achieving this, I can only hope that they are resourceful enough to manage there. Yeah, the most amazing people I've ever met. I'm glad you've Thank made friends. Yeah, it's them. <laughs> Hello, by the way, uh, gesturing to Evan is like, I'm <laughs> I know this is awkward. Don't feel like you have to. There's no obligation here I, for, for you. I, I, I'm, if you are standing here by sequential side, then you are a friend of mine. <laughs> and Evan's just like, hi, yeah. Uh, I, I hope that the Empire's people don't kill us when we uh, close the rift. <laughs> well, yes, I hope that too. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes it's a brave lad fighting the good fight mm -hmm. 
<sighs> sequential, I believe in you. There's... And I There's believe... so many questions that not one seems more important than any of the others. <laughs> Uh, we have perhaps a bit of time, but I believe that if if the Empire, are they imminent? Is their arrival close? I've heard they're on their way. Hmm. There's, there's, there's a beast that took roost in the telescope, but I don't know that it'll hold them off for long. Well, then perhaps, perhaps there is... There are still my notebooks <clears throat> and the knowledge that's within you. And I believe that we will still have our connection and I may be able to find a way to still speak with you. Mm -hmm. But for now, I believe that there is work <clears throat> to be done. I guess one thing that pops in my mind do you know in all of this Denethorian myth of Rupino? And we we essentially we found him trapped and we have the option of perhaps releasing him. And from all indications, that seems like a very bad idea. He he's genuinely surprised by that. It's like, <laughs> wow, you you really have been busy in my absence. <laughs> uh, I had never encountered his... them, only their their notes that they left behind in this place. I I, in my own readings, found Rupino to be certainly of like mind in the capacity of being an artificer, an inventor, and an arcanist, but although I found many of his aims sympathetic, I nonetheless find it alarming that he felt it necessary to construct a weapon of such devastating power. And as much as I might find myself disapproving of that, I do not have the knowledge that may have led him to feel that it was necessary. But nonetheless, is there any of, oh, go ahead. Is there, is there any of these, um, these figures, there's a Sild and Tanglefoot and that you feel is trustworthy? A Sild? Because Did you meet a Sild? Well, we kind of have most of them trapped as well and uh, are, are, are uh, hesitant to release or try to release any of them. Isild came to me before you and tried to persuade me to abandon this site, to leave it to its ruins. But she and I came to an accord. I believe I was able to persuade her of my good intentions. And she left without forcing the issue. And she got herself trapped in a deck of cards. Well, a lot of that <laughs> going around, it would seem. <laughs> <laughs> And Tanglefoot appears to be a, a beast. I I'm not, I I don't know who that is. Oh, oh what was his other name? Uh, he he probably wouldn't know anyway. That was like, okay. it's kind of just a coincidence <laughs> that <laughs> that he knew uh, Isild. But sure. Um, I think that um, there is uh -huh. a a shudder from above somewhere, like like of uh -huh. some kind of a tremor. Never enough time. And there was so much time. I can't believe we were <laughs> scores of feet from each other. Hmm. I had no idea. We are fated to meet again. We are connected. But for now, there is work to be done. Yeah. I miss you. I love you. <laughs> love you too. 
And I, he looks over to Evan and again, it's like, you don't have to say it. I understand we just <laughs> um uh yeah so i'll start dashing back around um okay to the control room mm -hmm. so um <laughs> just because i can show it off again um i will once again just demonstrate that <laughs> and so i think with the closing of that portal we're going to uh to flip over to our our other group uh for the moment and uh uh and and leave uh sequential and evan's fate unknown to the rest of you but uh what you certainly know is that as you are starting to have various locations uh um pointed out to you on a distant burning horizon uh the portal that you have descended from above in this uh, strange cavern that you climbed down out of, um, suddenly disappears. And Syndrex <laughs> turns to you and says, what is this? What's that supposed Betrayal? to happen? Betrayal? Where's the portal go? Can, can, can we get How back? How are we supposed to get back? Uh, <laughs> make deception <laughs> checks, please. <laughs> Absolutely do that. <laughs> Nine. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, okay. Three. <laughs> yeah. uh, Damn it. I think it's hilarious, frankly, uh, Starla, that uh, Carolina's uh, critical failure deception check produces an 18. Right. <laughs> one, of my, one of my feats as a bard is that if I roll a, a, mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. nine or lower. Yeah, no, I'm... I'm yeah. impressed, but uh, I think here's <clears throat> here's the problem. I think that you'll find here is that um, he. Mad. I think he is mad enough that it doesn't matter whether you meant it to happen or not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and so I think we're going to go ahead and use this map to uh, to deal with this um uh, if if you uh if you find that acceptable okay <laughs> i, I right. feel like we've gotten away with a lot up to this point uh, well <laughs> you sure have disrupted yeah. what i was thought was going to happen so that's good. uh that's exciting it's 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 not a complaint <laughs> i am thrilled and delighted that you have surprised me so dramatically <laughs> because this is not what i thought you were was going to happen um, okay, I, it's just the four of you now, right? Oh, God. Yeah. And then there were yeah. four. Yeah. Damn it, we should have got Buster out before we went through the portal. <laughs> we really and he has have. the dragon scale power now, so... Well, oh, you don't know what? if he would have had the ability to um, attune to it. Attune to it? Hasn't been he an hour, it. but yeah. you also don't know. I mean, you'd, you'd kind of know if you're still you attuned would know, to it. right? She was yeah, or my eyes still uh, glowing purple. Well, so it, it, <laughs> once it moves far enough away from you, it breaks the attunement anyway. Hmm. Yeah, you are not it's still attuned to it. Yeah, I figured that was. Yeah. Oh, whoops. All right, so. Oh, yeah, um, we're rolling initiative. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Four. We're going gonna to go ahead and do that and uh, re-roll initiative for Oh, sure. For now I guys. roll nicely. Okay. <laughs> and uh um i i do have some uh st more stuff for sequential when we when we come to it but uh this is going to be a little bit mm -hmm. oh yeah um no it won't <laughs> it's well, going to be very short <laughs> very badly we all gonna die okay <laughs> boom, boom. well boom. so he sure rolled low on his initiative um but uh oh he rolled lower than me even wow yeah so we have uh, Zinhorns. Up oh, there we go. We'll go ahead and put it in. There we go. All right. So um, yeah, I think I think your impression here is he is enraged by the apparent loss of his domain into the material plane. He is beyond reason. Um, you may have persuaded him 
that it was you you all being dumb that caused it as opposed to malicious intent he still wants to kill us. Nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, Carolina, you see him <clears throat> looming down at you, his f- hands once again wreathed in fire. You're in a strange sort of cavern that right now is not like actively on fire. It's certainly very hot here. The air is very smoky in general. But uh, nonetheless, uh, you know, at least for the moment, we're, we're going to use this map. You can assume that uh, there, there is an exit that you could just run away, but he also can fly and could just fly after you probably. Okay. <clears throat> so I need to check one thing real fast. Okay. Bonus action first. I am going to do uh unsettling words okay um so you hear um from cobalts to kings to villains and things there are suckers among them all (laughs) and so now (laughs) he has to take a 1d8 hold on stop being on there okay i must subtract the number rolled from the next saving throw it makes before the start of my next turn Okay. And since that was my bonus action, <laughs> mm-hmm. I would like to cast. Hmm. See, now here is the. Okay. <clears throat> I am going to cast a um, fourth level spell. It nude me. Uh, Phantasmal Killer. Phantasmal Killer. Okay. It is a wisdom 16 saving throw. Okay. And oh, then uh, and he has not. to subtract a d8, right? Or a 1d8? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Well, he only rolled a 9, so let's go <laughs> ahead and subtract a 1d8. Um, got a 2, so that produces a 7. So that's uh, 18 psychic damage. Is that right? Uh, yes. Let's see. That, uh, let's see. On a failed save, the target becomes frightened for the duration. At the end of each of the target's turns before the spell ends, the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 4d10 psychic damage. Okay, so it's repeating as long as you maintain concentration. Yeah, up to one minute. Okay, yeah, so that's pretty good. So here, let's see. And then minus 18. And then he's frightened of you, huh? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, so Nedry, you're up. Oh, oh no. Okay. <sighs> um, Nedry will scoot over to send beside the three of them. Mm-hmm. Hmm. How many? Let's just check this. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so he'll he'll uh, hold out his arms, grab my arms, to uh, to uh, Lynn and Zaylene, and then kind of holding his elbows out so they can grab a hold, starts scribing a kind of crude pair of wings, but he's holding Zinhorn in his view, kind of pattern them after his own back wings (laughs) fly you fools fly and i'll cast fly (laughs) on fifth level on myself zaylene and lynn oh okay so you now can fly for 10 minutes speed of 60. okay so here's here that's that's great here's um uh one of the challenges there uh so I'm going to take us off of the combat map if you're going to be flying all over the place. So <laughs> uh, I think Zinhorn's fly speed I, is not that high. Nope, I don't think so. Also, I think my fly uh, speed is the same as my walk speed. Yeah. 30. Also, Syndrex has a fly speed of 60 feet, too. So Oh, yeah. It's all about mobility. It's not about getting away. Okay, well, then uh, maybe we will stay on the map then. If I, I thought you were going to maybe try to just flee. Uh, but if you're if you're hanging out to fight, 
All right, good. That's that's fine. I'll just put a. <laughs> I was just trying. We can do it either way. I just want to make sure I'm able to uh, follow what's happening. Uh, okay, yeah, so. Yeah. And uh, for the rest of his movement, uh, assuming this is roughly the same sort of thing, eh, there's not really any place to scurry to, but he will try. Just kind of fly out away from everybody, uh, kind of off to that direction. Okay. It sort of takes that, takes that, then just sort of leaps up and floats over in that direction. All right. Okay. Uh, it is now uh, Zinhorn's turn. Uh, so it's clear that this guy is going to try and kill us, right? He sh- it sure seems that way. So it he looks pretty much like he did before the rest of your friends talked him out of it last time. This time they didn't try. All right. Uh, well, I guess they kind of I... did, but we're not less successful. I'm going to fire, fire a guiding bolt at him at okay. fifth level. All right. Twenty six. Twenty six will definitely hit. Twenty four points of damage. Nice. And that is uh, radiant damage. That is radiant damage. Radiant damage. I don't. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make any specific special difference, but uh, yeah. Okay, and now he is briefly glittery too for uh, uh, the guiding bolt effect. Um, he, you know, you definitely mm-hmm. knock him back, and he look. He's, you know, he was already mad, so you know he's still mad. But you definitely heard him. Okay. Anything else? From your turn. Um, no. Uh, oh, I'm uh, going to cast uh, spiritual weapon at uh, fourth level. Okay. Um, what was wait, the guiding, so, guiding no, bolt? Yeah, oh, no. guiding bolt is a spell. I, you can't do that in the. Yeah, I can't do that. All right, so that's it. That's it for me. Okay. Next is Zaylene. Um, I'm going to. Or this the square is five or ten? Five. Okay. I'm gonna move um forward five feet just so he's within thirty feet of me, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna cast Hexblade's curse as my bonus action. Okay. Does he make a saving throw for that or it just works? No, it's automatic. Okay. <clears throat> and then I am going to um I'm gonna cast armor of Agathus on myself. Okay. And I'm going to um fly up here and that's my turn all right uh okay and then it is his turn and he uh looks at all of you and he seems like he's reassessing a little bit and then he says minion fight with me and then he points to a spot on the ground where emerges a fire elemental to join him in the fight. Uh, he doesn't point there, though. He, uh, it's like he, he's pointing it down at his feet. And then he says, Kill them! Um, and then uh, that is, I believe that is his whole action to do that. Yes. Um, and then he, he's going to sort of, he's, Floats further over here, but he is thirty feet off the ground, right here. Uh, he can't uh, move he, any he closer. Also, oh, yeah, you're, right, you're, right, you're right. You're right. You're right. So he just um, goes thirty. Needs... Okay, uh, he can't move closer. Go okay, ahead. yes, um, <laughs> I moved him back, but he is going flying upward. And he needs to make another wisdom saving throw on his turn. Yes, and he'll okay. do that right now. Uh, this time he got a twenty-four. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Oh, the spell ends. No! <laughs> well, I mean, you know, <laughs> you got lucky that first time. He has a relatively yeah. good score for that. He is essentially a fire genie. So, <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So, but that is his turn. Uh, Carolina, it is your turn. There is also now a fire elemental on the field. 
Yep. <clears throat> okay. So now how far is he from me? I mean uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Forty. Okay. Well, he's also thirty then... feet in the air. It's it's the whole dumb Euclidean math again. Okay. Well, I mean I can fly up to his level. Mm -hmm. And then I will, I'm going to do that thing again. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, unsettling words. Okay. And, okay. Whatever. And then, um, yes. <clears throat> For the dealer controls all the pieces and your fate will be out of your hands. So be wary when placing your wager. It may cost you your life or your lands. So there's a 1d8. And right. then I am going to cast Polymorph. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it, let's see. Let's see if I do it. Okay, that just means I can it's, do it. That's a wisdom saving throw as well? <clears throat> that is yes okay wisdom 16 um he got a natural 20 for a 26 but oh you're right but minus a d8 but uh i don't think mm. even an eight damn it sorry okay. yeah he got yeah. he got a natural 20 on the roll so it was a seven on the d8 so it's only a 19 but that's still i think a success still beats yep. yeah sorry i don't i don't think i have anything that'll give me yeah no i don't mm. okay so um i mean it's worth the shot sometimes uh, the dice don't <laughs> yeah support i'm you. going to use the rest of my movement <laughs> to go over um let's see uh so it was 30 feet up so i got another 30 feet okay Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Yeah, that's not very helpful. Okay. <laughs> I'll go there. Okay. I believe you have a fly speed of 60 feet. Right, but if I went up 30 feet to... Well, I guess I didn't really need to, did I? I'm, I'm trying to... Yeah, because I wanted to get within 30 feet of him to... The, well... I... It's okay. Be wherever, you, where, wherever makes sense. <laughs> I wanted to be further away from him. Okay. <laughs> so, like, anyway. All right. But yeah. Okay. Nedry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, he brought a friend. That's that's kind of mean. Um. Yeah. How dare he? <laughs> uh, oops. Wrong button. Just want to check something to understand. All right, that looks like about right. Uh, Nedry will fly over towards here. I think that's range enough. Yep, that's within 60 feet. Uh, and cast Ray of Frost at the little friend. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can. Whoops. That is a 16 to hit. That does hit. Okay. For eight points of cold damage, and its speed is reduced, reduced by ten. Uh huh. Nice. Uh, so it is not especially vulnerable to cold damage, but it does it does certainly take that damage. It is not resistant either. All right, and then he will. Uh, let's see. Fly back a little bit. Okay. Or, whew, whew, whew. Back and forth. Okay, and it is now the Fire Elemental's turn, and it is slowed, but it still has enough movement to get to Zinhorn. Has a movement speed of 50, usually. Uh, what, let's see, what does he do? Um, yeah. Let's see. So first, uh, just as it um, uh, enters your space, Zinhorn, because it just basically flows right over you um you're gonna take um six fire damage and you are on fire you are you're you're burning um and well, then that's it, not fun 
No, and uh, and it's also going to make two uh, attacks on you as well. Uh, that's a nine to hit. Probably not going to do it. And then a nope. seventeen. Uh, nope. Okay, so you are currently enveloped in it and are burning, and like the fire does not go out. You have to put it out. Um, or else you're going to continue taking burning damage from that, but it does not manage to do additional damage to you at this time. So it's your turn okay. now. Okay. Um, I am going to go up here and put the fire out. Is that my action, or uh, can I do that and still have an action? No, that is your action to do that. Um in one thing I'll clarify too, because this is going to come up again, is that anyone can take an action to douse the fire on anyone else, provided you're within touch range, because it's basically okay. just like patting it out. But and it does take someone's action. Is this guy seem to be grounded? Like, does uh, he stay on the ground? He is. He is fast, but he does not fly. I'm going to fly. Okay. I'm going to go. Uh, 20 feet in the air, I think. All right. Or whatever movement I have left, I'm going to go into the air. Okay. And put myself out. <laughs> sure. Uh, all right. Zeline, your turn. <laughs> um, I'm going to... I'm going to fly down here and I'm going to touch this guy and cast Inflict Wounds at uh, level three. Okay. Um, you are going to take five fire damage just getting that close to it, but then you can make okay. your attack. Um, when I take that, that five fire damage, does that count um, with my Hunger of Hadar? Uh, well, I mean, you're, I, you know, it... it, it your your armor of agathis you mean oh yeah yeah sorry um <laughs> one of those yeah because uh, it says it's like a melee like yeah. if you take melee um, damage i mean yeah it, no it would apply here yeah okay so um he takes uh five cold damage okay and um yeah that's that's what happens to okay him. um so I'm going to cast uh, Inflict Wounds. Mm -hmm. I hope. Uh, 23 to hit. Yeah, that'll do it. Yep. Okay, so that's uh, 19 necrotic damage nice. plus... Um, nope, nothing else. Yeah, uh, he, he kind of... Uh, parts of his uh, flaming form like on the shoulder like starts to like flicker out and and grow like dim and embers until he sort of reflares but you certainly uh you certainly heard him good and i'm going to um yeah that's it okay <laughs> i think i might if i move i'll he, he can get an attack of opportunity right um uh, yeah Okay. Well, but then. you're also for as long as you're right there, uh, you, for for the fire elemental, he is literally fire. You're going to take damage for as long as you just even stand that close to him. Okay. Um, then I will um, I will fly back up here and take the attack of opportunity. Okay. Uh, fourteen to hit. Uh, yep. Okay. Um, that's going to be 12 fire damage and you are now on fire. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so that is, is now Syndrex's turn. Um, I think the, the, like the glitter from guiding bolt works until so, until someone gets the advantage on the attack, right? Okay, so that's... Uh, it says the next attack has advantage. Right, but nobody has made an uh, attack against him yet. Um, oh, okay. Uh, since that happened. Um, and then the... See, what was the orange one? Was the Hexblade's Curse. Okay. So um, he is not frightened anymore, though. And he's looking around at everyone flying and trying to stay out of reach of his fire elemental. And then he looks over to you, Nedry. Um, and he is going to... He, his fire glows in his hands and he whoosh, whoosh, 
hurls these two uh, balls of fire at you. Um, the first one is going to be a 25 to hit. Uh, yep, that hits. I will react with absorb elements. Oh, good. Uh, to reduce the damage. Sure. So the damage uh, was going to be 22 fire damage. Okay, that so. reduces it to 11. Mm hmm. All right. And then the, uh, and please make a concentration check for your fly. Yeah, that's the part which is annoying. Mm. Um, Okay, that's 16, good. that's enough. You hold it for now. Now the second one, the second attack is only a 14 to hit. And that misses. Okay. Um, and he, yeah, he snarls at you, though, and he sort of uh, zooms in the air. 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh, yeah, he's, he's coming up at you, um, Nedry, but uh, he used his attacks already. So that makes it your turn, Carolina. Hey. <clears throat> well, this has all gotten way out of control, but, mm. you know, that's normal. Um, and so she goes to sing again, but the song is a little different this time, and you can't quite decide how it's different. You've heard her sing the song before, but it, there's just something about the tone of it is a little different. Mm. And you hear... Spirits tremble, empires falter, hearing the ballad of storm and stone. And as I do that, I am casting animate objects. Ooh. And so then 10 small rocks. Okay. That's what it says. Um, yeah. Are going to kind of fly up in the air in this swarm. And as they kind of knock into each other a little bit it sounds like you it almost sounds like thunder okay i am uh i've got a a, a swarm of bats token that i'll use for that that'll work <laughs> i've never used this so i'm not it's a good spell. Sure how this you're, is gonna work <laughs> you're gonna have a lot of dice to roll here in a minute <clears throat> um so i what are you doing with your um um well i won't the... want them to let's see you have to use a bonus action to give them a command. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see like how speed is 30 feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. The object lacks legs or other appendages. Um, it instead is a flying speed of 30 feet yeah, yeah. <laughs> and can hover. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Okay. Well, we're close enough to the fire mm -hmm. guy. So um, we'll go after him first. Okay. All of them. All right. Sure. <laughs> so uh, you 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 should have the stats there as part of the spell, but you're going to be making mm -hmm. um, you know ten attack rolls using their stats. Cool. Just do all of the d twenty rolls first, and then we'll resolve the damage. Okay. My thing went away. Why did it leave? <laughs> Yeah, so Come this back. is definitely a spell that uh, is very cool, also requires a lot of dice rolling, and it's very complicated. <laughs> keeps, the thing keeps going away. Okay. Oh, there you go. That's two. Mm -hmm. So, one hit so far. <laughs> or... This is really annoying. <laughs> I, I'm counting hits, so... One hit so far. Yeah, your dice are not helping you out right now. No, they are not. That's two hits. Seven, eight. That one hit. Oh, yeah, three. Nine, ten. Three more. <laughs> Okay, unfortunately, that's only three hits out of 10, which is just bad luck because it's only an ace, a 13 you're trying to get. But um, each of those is... Um, 1d8 plus 2. Yeah, well, so each of, each of them did their own little um, roll for, for when you... Uh, oh, they already did the damage? Yeah. Yep. Each one came up that way in, in roll 20. So it's five damage for one of them, 10 damage... 
and then another five damage. So it's like 20 total. Oh, okay, yeah. that's cool. So I don't have to roll anymore. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, because they're just doing bludgeoning damage, well, you know, here's here's a complicated question. This is definitely a mat like it's magical that they're animated, but does that mean that when that animated rock hits something that it's magical bludgeoning damage? They're still rocks. Like it's I I would think it would be almost like you're levitating something. If you levitate an object and hit something with it, does it count as magical damage? Here, I, I'm, you're I'm, not I'm though, like they're Google. animated. Like they're um, animated, so they're they have like animation to them. Uh, okay. Um, uh, so the stat block, if it does not say that it is magical damage, then it is not. It does not. Did it say on roll twenty? Uh, uh, well, just says bludgeoning damage. Yeah, I don't. So I think what that just means is that the magic is going into making them float around and follow your commands, not the damage. So what that means is that the fire elemental is resistant to this damage, but uh, it definitely is still very frustrated with this, uh, this uh, swarm outcome. of tiny rocks. Yeah. It Small still rocks. takes, t it still takes 10 and is, is like swarmed by all of these little rocks that are beating at it. Uh, all right. Uh, that was your turn. Any, anything else on your turn? Um, yeah, I feel like I want to move a little bit, mm -hmm. too. I'm going to go over here. No, one more. <laughs> Wait. Okay, yeah. There. Okay. I'm living on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nedry, your turn. Oh, hey. Uh, I still have a, a lot of questions for you. He's drawn a big flaming scimitar as well. Yeah. No, that's not good. It's longer um, than you are tall. Yep. Yep. That's definitely bad. I still have questions for you, but I don't think you're in the mood. Uh, as a bonus action, I will cast Misty Step. Okay. And appear there. Mm -hmm. uh, as an action, I will cast Ray of Frost at him. Okay. Which is at advantage. Uh, it is. That's correct. I can get the advantage to work. Uh, there we go. 26. Uh, 26 for sure hits. Okay. Eight cold damage and his speed is reduced by 10. Okay. And then I'm going to use my movement to get the heck away. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, let's go there. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, so the fire elemental, um, is, uh, currently under the instructions of just kill them without being more specific. And so I'm going to say that it is too dumb to, to not, you know, ignore the uh, rocks. So it is going to make its attacks on your rocks. Um, but so each of them have their own HP. And they do take damage. So um, they, they have an AC of 16. <laughs> okay. Well, but they're also just within the proximity of this fire elemental. So they are catching fire. And okay. so they are do all. Rocks catch fire? Wow. Hmm? Do rocks catch fire? That seems. They are okay. basically fly. It's they're flying through magic napalm. <laughs> okay. Um, they're like they take, meteors now. Uh, actually rolled max damage. So they, they all are going to, they are all going to take 10 fire damage. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they are burning, which means that unless they use their action to put themselves out, they're going to yeah. take that again next time. Although it might be lower roll. That was max damage, but then it's attacking just two of them. One gets a 16. Um, Oh, that meets it. Yeah. And then, uh, and that does six fire damage to it. The other one is a 10. So I guess that misses. So yes, all of them should have taken 10. One has taken 16 fire damage. Okay. So, but yes, that is the, uh, the, the fire elementals turn. Um, okay. Zinhorn. All righty. I am going to. 
zip over here that uh, so that puts me him 15 feet away from me and i'm gonna hit him with my lightning breath first the uh elemental or the ifrit so the ifrit okay uh so he has a dex 14 save okay dex not his best he gets an eight yay saying for no reason and it feels great 17 points of damage nice uh for lightning yeah not immune to lightning yep and then i am going to cast lightning uh, breath what kind of dragon are you <laughs> The one that's going to kick your ass. Oh, that's um, a good answer. Spiritual weapon at uh, fourth level. Okay, let's get you your, your hammer token. Uh, and I'm going to put that right up next to him. I, I, I always feel like I need to put it in a special place where it's easier for me to uh, get it, and then I don't. And then I have to uh, talk to myself about that. <laughs> um, here we go. Uh, hammer. Did it not go? Where is it? Uh, it's, there yeah, we, okay. There's two of them now. Two of them now. <laughs> right. um, you going to give me to, control I, of it? I, I will, and I'm doing that now. Okay. Uh, okay, should be good. All right. All right, make your attack roll with your spiritual hammer. That's a 13. A 13 is not enough. He bats it away with his big scimitar. All right. Uh, and that was 15 movement to get there means I have 15 more. And that's my turn. I'll be okay. right back. All right. Zaylene, you're up. Um, I'm going to use my action to put the fire out. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes yeah. sense. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Spiritual Weapon at level 3. Okay. And I'm going to put it right by this Afrit. I didn't end up getting a key token. Um, That's okay. I well, I'm just I'm saying that because I know I meant to, and then and then didn't. Um, I'm gonna use. Um, uh, I'm gonna use oh this little workshop token thing. Okay. Uh, is it showing up? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. There it is. It's kind of hard to see, but here. I can... And then I can attack with it too on this turn, right? Correct. Okay. There we go. Okay. So, what was the attack roll for it? Um, I think it was a four. So, yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Well, a four is not gonna hit. Yeah, but... it was. It, it was like a nine total. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no. Okay. So uh, that is your turn. Uh, yep. It is now Syndrex's turn, and he's getting very aggravated. First, he's yelling at the fire elemental, ignore the rocks, uh, attack the bard. Um, but uh, um, I, I'm pretty sure, it just occurs to me, well, we'll deal with that on his turn, but I'm pretty sure that the animated objects don't get opportunity attacks. Because they don't have a reaction. Um, but in any case, though, it is his turn. And he is going to... Yeah, actually, he's going to hurl flame at you, Carolina. Because uh, he, he doesn't like your animated objects. Um, that's a 20 to hit. Uh, I think you're muted, but I'm assuming that hits. It's and that's going to be 16 fire damage. 
Um, and please make a concentration check for your animated stones. Saving throw or check? Uh, it's a constitution saving throw. Okay, yeah. And you're trying to beat um, either 10 or half the damage, which in this case means it would be 8. You're trying to nope. beat 8. <laughs> oh, no! Okay, so... Flaming pebbles go falling. Yes. Damn it. They, could, they do continue so, burning rocks on fall, the ground. Yeah. But we're not all dying, so... Okay, and then he goes ahead and... Uh, uh, laughs to himself in, in, in pleased with himself there. And then he's going to throw the other one, um, at Nedry to try to break that concentration as well. Cause he's a smart guy. Um, but he only gets a 10, so that's probably not going to hit. Nope. All right. Uh, that's his turn. And then he is going to, uh, use his speed though to, um, Go ahead and fly over over here to Zaylene. Okay. It, it was reduced by 10, but I think he had... Uh, yeah, he had enough to still do that. Okay. Uh, he had a fly speed of 60. Uh, okay. So, Carolina, your turn again. All right. So, I feel like if... I were to cast Shatter in between the Fire Elemental and the Freet, is that 10 feet on either side? Um, yes. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, you can get both of them in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I'm going to do that. Okay. And I'm going to do it at second level. So that is a constitution saving throw, 16. Okay. Um, for, uh, both of them. So let's see. First, the Ifrit. The Ifrit gets a 16, which I think yep. just makes it. Yeah. Okay. And then the Fire Elemental rolls a 21. So, yeah. These dice are not being kind uh, to me tonight. They still take half, I believe, right? Yeah, which is four. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Well, okay, you're, you're and down then, uh, two. You're down two people from when where I balanced this encounter too. So, yeah. <laughs> wait, what okay. are you talking? What, what that you don't know what balance is? You don't. <laughs> that's meta. Um, um and then um, bonus action. I'm gonna uh, give Zaylene. I keep spreading out. Um, I keep having to zoom out the map so everyone is on the screen. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give Zaylene. Um, through amber and ashes, she will not be swayed. When the battle is over, she just walks away. And Zaylene now has a 1d8. Yes, Bardic Inspiration. Mm. Very nice. Okay, Nidri. Oh, wait, oh sorry. See. Hold on. I got to see if, I'm gonna, if I want to move. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're on deck, Nidri. Go there. Okay. Done. Uh, all done? Cool. Uh, fly a little bit closer. Hurl it out yet another ray of frost at uh, uh, Syndrex. That's not the button I wanted to hit. Hit this one. See, if you hadn't used all your hit. spells on the guy who stole the circlet, you'd maybe have some more power right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> 25 to hit. That'll hit. Nine points of, of cold damage. Nice. Speed reduced by 10. Okay. And then he'll take the rest of his movement. He's taken some damage, but he seems pretty sturdy still. Okay. Um, that is the end of Nedry's turn. So it is the flame elemental now. Um, I think it's going to zoom around, um, 15, 20, and it's going right past, uh, Zaylene. You are going to take the, uh, the, uh, one fire damage, but you're on fire again. Do I get an attack of opportunity? Uh, yeah. Okay. I have to uh, stab him up with my daggers. Hopefully. No. <laughs> <laughs> Missed. 
because I don't touch these things that often. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, Carolina, it, it does manage to get all the way to you and it did dash to do that, but it also still by just enveloping you, you're going to take six fire um, damage and be on fire. How high were you flying? He, he went oh, around on the, the uh, oh, are, are you? I, yeah, I was in the air, though. I was probably at least 30 feet in the air, I would imagine. Oh, That's well, what okay, was, so but... you guys need to clarify that because when you went up on the rim, that was 30 feet higher and you didn't say that you went another 30 feet up or anything like that. Uh, well, that was back when I did like polymorph. I was assuming that I was still on the same. I didn't well, go any higher so... or lower. But. Okay, yeah. So if you were 30 feet when you did polymorph and then you flew over to the rim, you would not be 30 feet above the rim, right? You would be at okay, the level. I, well, I didn't know how, how tall is the rim. I didn't know that either. It's, so. it's, 30 it's, it's fine. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. I'll take it. Um, so that would be six fire damage and you are on fire. Yay. All right. Um, but that is its turn. Uh, Zinhorn. Oh, you're muted. How far can I move my spiritual weapon? I believe it's only 20 uh, feet. 20, yeah. So, start moving it that way. He's already within 15 feet of me. Mm -hmm. um, so, I can hit him with the lightning breath again. Mm -hmm. It's another um, dexterity saving throw for him. Well, or I can do another guiding bolt. Um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take the chance and use the lightning. Okay. Uh, he gets a critical fail on his dexterity saving throw, which doesn't mean anything except that he does fail. No, nope. fifteen points of damage. That's not bad. He snarls in frustration at you, Rah! like that. Okay. Any anything else? Uh, um, you, moved, you used your bonus action to move the weapon. Uh, any movement of, of your own? Um, he moves so much faster than me. Uh, I think I'm right where I want to be. So no. Okay. All right. I'm gonna hover. Okay, Zaylene, your turn. Hey, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to use my bonus action to drag this over 20 feet i can't move it though because you put it on <laughs> oh yeah sorry let me uh I it's okay do that but um also just to be clear you you are on fire but what mm -hmm. that means is you'll take one d10 fire damage um, um per round per round yeah okay Actually, technically, you're supposed to take it at the start of your turn. I, that's not yeah. what I've been doing, but yeah. So, okay. uh, so that's going to be another four fire damage. Okay. And then I'm going to use my action to summon my shadow spawn, and it's going to be um, a despair. Uh -huh. And he's going to go right, like, by behind the a free. Like okay. sort of diagonal. From what does me. he look like? What does this shadow spawn look like? He's like this droopy shadow, and his face is kind of like like the theater masks, and it's just like his face is like oh, like he's miserable. How do how do you like this guy? Perfect. <laughs> and then he takes his turn directly, like after my okay. turn. You should have control over that token now. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So he is going to um, do. Uh, let me make sure quick before. Oh yeah, he's fine. Um, he's going to do dreadful screen. Okay. So uh, the Afrit has to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Let's have him do that. He rolled low and got an eight. Okay, so now he is frightened of the shadow. Ah. 
Um, I actually want him to be like right there. Well, okay, yeah, that's fine. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry I forgot I had that's control okay. of him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, at the start of the Ifrit's turn, um, when he starts his turn, he has his speed reduced by 20 feet. Okay. All right. So, uh, that, uh, is that the end of your turn? Yep. Okay. Uh, it's his turn. And I think, um, in his, his fear of that thing, um, he's going to attack it with his scimitar, uh, with disadvantage because he's frightened of it. Um, so let's see. Um, so it'd be an 18 to hit for the first one. Does that hit your shadow spawn? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's going to do 14 uh, slashing damage and 9 fire damage. Okay, so 23. Yep. And then the second uh, attack is a 25, even with disadvantage. Yep. So that's going to be 13 slashing damage and 4 fire damage. So that's an another 17. Okay. All right. Does he make the wisdom saving throw again? Um, let me check. No. No, it's just until the start of his next turn, I think. Um, no, it's Wait, just, I'm uh, checking. It's, it, yeah, he has to repeat it at the end of his turn. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I was uh, only got a 13, thing. so it means it's still still up. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so that is his Syntrax's turn, and uh, Carolina, you're up. Yeah, so um, first thing I'm going to do... Yeah, you're on is, fire. Uh, Lots yep. of fire. Uh, do I have to take that damage at the beginning of my turn? Oh, yes, you do. So let me roll that. That's going to be two fire damage for you. Okay. All right, and uh, then I am going to move... I know I'll take an opportunity attack. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 15, 20, gets a 13. 40, 50. That does not hit. Okay. I will go 50 feet over and then another 10 feet in the air. Okay. And uh, since that was my action to put myself out. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yup. Yeah. All right. Great. Ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> Nedry. Okay, that makes my decision easier. Um, because I see that... Um, um, hmm. Yeah, Zay is in the worst way. Okay, I start tracing out two circles mm -hmm. and then kind of draw a line between them. One of the circles, from my perspective, has uh, Zaylene in it, and the other circle is right here. And I cast Vortex Warp. I will speak into her mind, trust me, and cast Vortex Warp to move her here. Okay. Do you trust Nedry? Oh, Jenny. Do, uh, <laughs> you, Nedry is sp spoken in your mind to say, trust me. Do you? Oh, yeah. All right. So. Whoop. Yeah, a little bit over further. Whoop. Just a, whoop. Whoop. And that is his thing. turn. All right. Is that, is that all that happens? Just that she gets teleported? Uh, yes. Okay, I cool. So, yeah. Uh, yep. There you go. And in my brain, I'm just like, thanks, Dad, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he hears you back, does he? Probably not. <laughs> or I, I don't know. You, unless you had telepath. Uh, tele yeah, I guess it would. You I don't have, have that open. Anyway, well, he does, though. Um, okay, <laughs> so your, your tele telepathy isn't, uh, telepathy isn't just one way, right, Nedry? I mean, it goes both ways, right? It's never really specified. I think we've, you we've had it so telepathy, could respond and if to it, it doesn't say one way, I would assume it's both ways. Okay. Anyway, that's Nedry's turn. Any anything else on your turn? Uh, moving, moving, or anything? Uh, nope. Okay, it is the fire elemental's turn then, um, and uh, it is. Let's see. It does not have a lot of good options. Um, it can't fly. Um, yeah, I think, uh, because he didn't, uh, 
you know, he he told it to attack you, and so it's just going to helplessly, like, flail at you, unable to reach you. Um, and uh, Zinhorn, that makes it your turn again. We, we don't hear you. I'm going to move my spiritual weapon up. Um, first, and I'm going to do the combo lightning and spiritual weapon attack. Very nice. So, dex 14 saves. Okay, dex. Woo! Yeah, nope, that's a fail. That is going to be seven points of damage. Mm -hmm. And... Where'd it go? Spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon. Uh, anyway, they're all plus seven attacks. Um, but let me find the right one. There it is. 17. Okay. That hits. That just hits. Okay. And he is going to take 14 points of damage. Oof. All right. Yeah, he's looking a little peaked at the moment. Like he's he you know he's a beefy guy. He could take him a little more, but you're start it's starting to show. Uh, okay. Anything anything else for Zinhorn? Um, he's still in the same place. He's right where I need him to be. All right. So. Okay, Zeline, your turn. Um, I'm going to use my bonus action to move this over here and take a swap at him. So that is... I have to look at the spell again. A melee. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just have to look. Uh, that's a 21. That'll hit, yeah. Okay. And then... Two damage. Okay. And then I'm going to move forward um, 15 feet and I'm going to cast Toll the Dead at uh, the Afrit. Okay. He makes a wisdom saving throw, yes? Is that correct? Um, no, it's a melee spell attack. Toll the Dead is not a melee spell attack. Oh, wait, I'm on the wrong thing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the other one. I believe it's... That's if you hit him with the bell. Yeah. Wisdom 15. Yeah. yeah wisdom. Uh, I get an 8, so that's going to fail. Okay. So he... And he's already taken damage? For sure. Okay, so it's 2d12. Okay. I'm going to have to roll them manually, I think, because the... Oh, did it roll? Yeah. yeah. Nice. All right. Um, so 10. Okay. All right, it is his turn, and first thing he's going to do is fly up and away from the spiritual weapons in the shadow spawn. Um, does the shadow spawn get an opportunity attack? It, it's um, like a creature that I, has its own initiative roll, which means it gets attacks and reactions, I believe. I think so. Um, yeah, so you can have it make yeah. an opportunity attack if it has a melee attack that it can do. Um. I don't think it does. Okay. Like they're just well, like it's a chilling rend. Oh yeah, that's a melee weapon attack. Okay. Yep. So that is a D twelve. So I gotta roll a D twenty. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're waiting on the dice roll. Uh, so, its speed was reduced by 20, though, at the beginning of this. Turn. Yeah, it was, because it's still that, that condition was active, like, as long okay, as he was in the same. Let, let, just do the attack first. It's 15. Yep. Okay, well, it hasn't shown up on the blog. That's why I was waiting. It, yeah, because I had to roll the dice. Okay. Because well, it I, doesn't okay, have a thing. I, so, okay, yeah. thank you. I so didn't it's 15, and then uh, it... Yeah, so it, if, if 15 is not enough to hit. Okay. Um, so he is using his action to, to dash. He is fleeing. And as he does, um, 
he he shouts down at all of you and says, "If you wanted to see the elemental plane of fire so badly, I hope you enjoy it. May you choke on the smoke." And then he uh, flies away. Are you gonna pursue? I mean, he's just flying off into the ele elemental plane of fire somewhere. You can well, chase him I mean, if you want. If we kill him, we get my dragon scale back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he is going to get, uh, let's see, let me double check his movement speed. He's going to get 100 feet away on this turn. So. Uh, I can't catch him. You can, well, you can dash. Well, no, Zinhorn still can't fly fast enough. The rest of you with that fly spell could, but you'd be leaving yeah. Zinhorn behind. We'll come back. Also, well, he does not look <laughs> like he is about to die. You've heard him enough that he's given up the fight, but he is like, you know, one ray of frost is not going to do it. All this says to me is that he's a wuss and that he won't come after us again. He does appear Unless to be he gets fleeing, more so the question is just, are you, are you chasing him down or no? He's no, because the problem in front of us rather than the problem that's leaving. So I don't think we should because we're already down sequential. I mean, it would just be the three of us if we, you know, leave Zenhorn behind. But if he's fleeing, anyway, okay. If we say no, then it's no. Well, certainly uh, by the time I think everyone kind of has that conversation, he is. Well, we still team, have this team guy. Team Sindrex is blasting off again. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no, this guy, as as he uh, as Sindrex uh, disappears, the fire elemental um, suddenly kind of starts looking like. Then it just kind of wanders off. It's happened again. How do I find myself in these strange places all the time? <laughs> yeah. So it stops attacking and wanders off, and so and it it seems to be no longer a threat to you unless you want to hurt it. Nah, in which fine. case it will probably start fighting again <laughs> uh okay so i think Ouchie. then that, Not a friend. Uh, <laughs> um so i think then we're we're going to leave the rest of you in for this session kind of looking around and saying so elemental plane of fire huh it's fine it's yeah. fine everything's fine um, uh. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Before we finish for tonight's session, I, I want to uh, take us back to the prime material plane and to Sequential and Evan. And uh, we're not going into full initiative for this at the moment, but I want to just kind of get a sense of your your immediate actions upon closing the rift and finishing your conversation with uh, with Greg Holm. What what's the plan? Uh, so. <clears throat> the plan is to close the rift and do as much destruction of the equipment as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a question because I still have since I don't even remember what early, 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 early episode, a pouch of automaton seeds mm -hmm. that need to be planted into the ground. So yeah. I need to find soil, which I know there was in the portal room. Mm -hmm. It looked soily. I don't know if there would be somewhere else more handy, but um, um, there was, yeah. there was, remember there was that, uh, that cavern where you fought like those, uh, weird spider mm, monster mm -hmm. things. And then there yeah, was yeah. also the place where you, uh, where all that sludge was like, there's a few places where you could get some, at some yeah. oil. So I think that'd be good. And I'm going to plant those suckers, which emerge from the ground in one D six minutes later. Okay. Um, and, and yeah, so yeah, it, I don't know what forms they're going to take, but I'm hoping they will. I can direct them to destroy, rip out pipes and destroy yeah. uh, control panels. Yeah. So I think I think what we will, in, in, instead of doing out the nitty gritty of it right now, we'll imagine that mm -hmm. they, you've got a couple of different forms and you start directing these strange uh, construct creatures uh, that don't seem to have any awareness beyond following your instructions um, to just start tearing uh, apart machinery. And Evan is helping. Um, I'll take and, them to different rooms, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, assign them to different rooms. And uh, at, at a certain point, um, you are, uh, y you you start hearing uh, the sound of uh, arguing of voices 
from Ooh. like the level above. And it sounds like um, there are other people in the facility now. Um, yeah, so job one was to start the destruction. Job two was to try to think of a way out. There was rooms we haven't explored. So mm -hmm. I was thinking of possibly running through them to mm -hmm. see if there's a another exit. So <clears throat> what you do as you make your way through there is the uh, we're going to once again, we're kind of fast forwarding mm -hmm. your your rapid exit as you emerge into tunnels that are clearly uh, spider, giant spider infested, but mm. you're not sticking around to just explore <laughs> casually. You're making your way out. So you're kind of running past and there's a, at one point a scare where a spider goes, ah! but then you just run away and um, you make your way to a spot where there's clearly a tunnel opening, but something's obstructing it and it's dark. And then as you start sort of, banging at it you realize it's a bunch of just bones piled up into a pile whoa and you smash past this pile of bones and find yourself face to face with the yetis again <laughs> <laughs> this time at the back of their cave <laughs> um and so there is uh what what is your immediate reaction there um <laughs> yetis um remember well, we've got the mom the and the little baby one the mom definitely snarls at you but kind of moves to like be put themselves between you and the baby mm -hmm. um if if it looks like there's a, a way you know like um you know a, a pathway that would avoid them um, I could cast a wind wall to put as a barrier between us. Okay. Yeah. If I have a clear way to go out. I think that definitely buys you enough time. Like it, it is startling enough to the Yeti that doesn't understand it, that you and Evan can use that opportunity to get past it and out the mouth of the cave. And once you are outside the mouth of the cave, and once again, on the outside of this mountaintop, um, I, you look up in the sky and you see just one of the emperor's airships, but it's clearly firing its portside weapons at something. <laughs> and then as you follow the trajectory, you see Sunia di Untorbello, the castle flying towards you. And, uh, uh, you, you, you hear Sora Shana in a message spell saying, did we make it in time? Just only just. <laughs> and so I think that's where we will, we will end tonight's <laughs> session. Um, so, uh, one an announcement, uh, we have, um, before we, we, uh, conclude our stream is that uh, Chooch is going to be leaving us for a while off to different pastures, whether they're greener or not. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's subjective, you know, it's like So, well, but but this is an entirely like there, you know, we, we will miss Chooch, but uh, this is, this is, mm -hmm. there's not, this is not a, 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 this, it's a melancholy thing because we'll miss him but otherwise there's it's right. not a bad feelings thing so um but uh you want to tell mm -hmm. everyone where they will be able to find you when they can't find you on this oh sure yeah so i've um, been working on some new projects um one of the well in the very first very first podcast project back in the day was the city of heroes podcast about the game city of heroes and uh viv and i recently relaunched it and as a twitch stream and we've been doing a lot of other Twitch streams and, and gaming. Um, so on twitch.tv, uh, the channel's Chooch and Viv. Um, and then also Viv's channel is Vivid Muse. Um, and so we're doing a lot of gaming on those, which has been consuming a lot of time. And, and we've uh, been really working on that. Maybe starting a, a new RPG adventure, but that's a bit ways away. But yeah. Um, yeah, all good things, and I love you guys. I'm going to miss you so much, mm -hmm. but uh, just not enough hours in the day right now. Yeah. Hope to come back soon. I think everybody can can relate to that. So um, 
definitely then uh, there there is the possibility that we may see sequential drop by back into the adventure uh, uh, once in a while. And uh, in, the, in the meantime, we wish you the best of luck with all of your other projects. And, yeah. uh, on so many levels. On so many levels. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and in the meantime, the rest of us are planning to be back next week to continue this adventure on so many levels. So many levels. So many, so many, many levels. levels. And they're all on fire. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>